All right, y'all. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. is live. We in the building, ready to have an outstanding show. Happy to see you, Facebook Live here, rocking with us. You rock with us. You roll. We roll with y'all. About to have an outstanding show as we do every single Monday night on the flagship show of Legacy Internet Radio. We are asking the question what would they do? What would they say? Who are they? We're going to tell you on the other side. We're going to have a segment called Be Better Beloved, where we will ask, when is being woke an issue? We got to talk about being woke because there are a lot of people who are so woke that they really are asleep. You're listening to and watching the flagship show of Legacy Internet Radio. It's called Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J. It's live. It's right now. Open your ears, strap on your thinking cap. Socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor and the top sports stories of the week. It's time for Ain't No Half Steppin' with Marcus J. Sellers has Jordan. Jordan with two seconds to go, puts it up and scores at the buzzer. Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago. Manning, watch it, Burris alone. If they lying, then they must be half stepping. And you know, I have step with Marcus J is live. We in the building. Be down with us tonight, 804-402-2893. Be down with the flagship show. Heard live from the den of Legacy Internet Radio. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who is rocking with us tonight. We appreciate those folks who are checking us out right now on the facebook live feed we appreciate those folks right now that are checking us out uh on the legacy internet radio.com feed we appreciate those folks that are checking us out on tune in and the replays on streamer on uh i what is it itunes we, we everywhere itunes soundcloud uh youtube y'all rock with us we rolling with y'all we appreciate it and we appreciate you guys you got some usual suspects here in the room that I'm going to introduce here momentarily. Let me just get them all mic'd up. You haven't heard this brother rock with us here on the flagship show of Legacy Internet Radio. Ain't no half stuff with Marcus J in quite a while. He's still here in the den every single week. He just hasn't been here, but it's all good because he's still part of the family. He is utilizing his utility playing skills all across the platform. He's my brother and yours, Mr. 3375. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? I can't, I can't, I, I'm not sure. If, uh, I think I, I don't have you mic'd up right. Try it now. There we go. My brother. I'm good. There you go. There you go. Somebody, somebody switched up the mics on me. Yeah, that's, that's, cool. what, that, that's what just happened. So. Yeah. But you good? I'm good, man. Yeah, man. Living well, life to the fullest, it's, man. It's good, to, it's good to see you over there, brother. It's back good in, to be back, back at home in, back in where your, I started. Back in your original, back in your original home right. where you originally started here. In the Dan Legacy Internet Radio. That's right. Yeah, man. Well, it's good to it's good to have you and whatnot. And I'm sure that it'll be something said here tonight that'll make you want to say what the hell. Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> Always. Yeah, of course. <laughs> if that's if that's going on. <laughs> yeah, man. And of course, our featured guest uh tonight, she joins us every single first Monday of the month. She's my sister. <laughs> We call her Q Boogie. <laughs> hey, what's up, Boogie? Yo, did y'all see me um, drive up on two wheels? <laughs> I did. Almost like Dukes of Hazard, you know, less the Confederate flag. Basically. Yeah. Without the Confederate flag. But, yeah. I, I 
literally just like slid into this joint like home base. For real? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get like dirty? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you skin your knee? <laughs> no, it's no crying in baseball. Oh so. no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Did she, she go there? Okay. Are you yeah. are you Rosie or Madonna? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> I can dig it. I can dig it. Well, it's good to see you guys, both of you guys. And uh as we go through tonight, we're going to ask what would they do? What would they say? And they being our ancestors. Nobody in particular, but we're going to have a word throughout the night from those folks who I was thinking about when I developed this show. What would they do? What would they say? We're talking about people like El Hajj Malik El Shabazz. We know him as Malcolm X. We're talking about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. We're talking about Cassius Clay, also known as Muhammad Ali. We're talking mm -hmm. about Tupac Amaru Shakur. People like that who have influenced me and others that are part of this show. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna talk about some of the things that we're dealing with today in 2017 in the United States of America. We're gonna have uh, a segment from our sister Q Boogie where she's going to talk about. <laughs> what exactly did I say? I uh, said. About the wokeness. About, um, being woke when you're still asleep. Yeah. Being woke and <laughs> yeah. still asleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, we got a, we got a, a live show tonight. Before we get into any of that, we're going to have a little bit of fun. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk to the 44th president of the United States. Boy, he well, he, 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 he's not here Dang it. today. Like, pull up a chair, buddy. Uh, oh, he's he's on, not man. here today. But I'm going to tell you, tonight is one of them nights where we're going to hear from Barack Obama. Okay. We're going to hear from Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali, uh, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. We're going to hear from them. All right. Bob Marley. We're going to hear from them because yeah. this show is dedicated to what would they do or what would they say. So this clip is from Bill Maher's show, oh. and it is from recently. And he asked a question, and I thought that this was an outstanding question he asked. The things that the 45th president has said, hmm. how would republicans respond <laughs> if the 44th president had said them <laughs> take a listen <laughs> this to this clip to it's going to be very interesting it's a nice clip and uh let's have some fun bill maher take it away and even when you say as i often do oh come on wouldn't you be furious of if obama had said you know the white house is a dump or whatever ridiculous thing Trump said that week. No, nope, they never admit it. We'd be cool with it. We're consistent. <laughs> so I got to thinking, what if I could actually show Republicans what it would look like if Obama had some, said some of the things that Trump has said? So here to help us with this little experiment, please welcome, on his birthday today, the 44th president of the United States, Barack Obama, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so it's not the real Obama. Who could afford his speaking fee? <laughs> This is, of course, our friend Reggie Brown, and he's here to help Republicans. He's here to help Republicans test their theory that they'd be cool with it if some of the crap that's come out of Trump's mouth was said by Obama. And I stress, this may not be the real Obama, but these are really Trump's words, every one of them verbatim. So let's begin with one we all know. What would it look like if Obama had said this about John McCain? He's not a war hero. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people who weren't captured. <laughs> not only would he have not won the election, but the screen would have gone black, and when we came back, Wayne Brady would have been there. <laughs> One of the big Republican complaints about Obama was that he didn't respect the military enough. What if they had asked him how he came by his military strategy and he said, I'm speaking with myself, uh, number one, because I have a very good brain <laughs> and, and I've said a lot of things. I 
I have a very good brain? That was another complaint about Obama. Oh, he's too full of himself. Too full of himself. What if Obama had said, <laughs> Sorry, losers and haters. Uh, but my IQ is one of the highest. And you all know it. What if he had said, I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody, and I wouldn't lose voters. Headline in the New York Post, black man threatened shooting spree, gunned down by police. And no matter how much scripture Obama cited, Republicans never believed he was really Christian. Imagine if Obama had said, why do I have to repent or ask for forgiveness if I'm not making mistakes? <laughs> when I drink my little wine and have my little cracker, I guess that's a form of asking for forgiveness. My little cracker? You mean... <laughs> you mean Jeff Sessions? <laughs> Another one of Obama's unforgivable flaws was that he didn't find America exceptional enough. Okay, so if Bill O'Reilly had asked Obama about Putin being a murderer, it would have been okay if his answer was... Uh, there are a lot of killers. We have a lot of killers. You think our country is so innocent? Yeah, Sean... <laughs> Sean Hannity's reaction would have been... Now, no politician ever tells the whole truth always, but what if Obama was so blatant as to say... I got to know Putin uh, very well uh, because we were both on 60 Minutes. <laughs> and then a few months later said... I never met Putin. <laughs> I don't know who Putin is. Yeah, who are you going to believe, me or me? That's just sheer dumbness. Obama wasn't the most experienced president ever, but what would have been the reaction if he kept claiming that things everybody knows were just being discovered? Nobody knew health care was so complicated. <laughs> we have to prime the pump. Have you heard that expression before? Uh, I came up with it a few days ago. <laughs> and I thought it was good. Frederick Douglass is an example of somebody who's done an amazing job and is getting recognized more and more. <laughs> and we haven't even gotten to the Access Hollywood tape. Republicans, you're really going to tell me you would be okay if Obama had said... Uh, I moved on her like a bitch. <laughs> I just start kissing them. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab him by the pussy. Grab him by the pussy? They blew a gasket when he said, cling to your Bible. And you're going to tell me you would be okay if our first black president used debate time to brag about the size of his dick? He referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you, there's no problem. I guarantee you. Look, I don't know the exact definition of white privilege, but being able to talk about grabbing pussies and how big your dick is and still getting elected president, that's got to come close. All right, that's our show. How about a hat for Ain't no hat to have on Marcus J. Live from the Den. Legacy Internet Radio. Thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to rock with us as we had a little bit of fun right there with the Bill Maher show uh, with a, of course, obviously a Barack Obama impersonator saying some of the things that 45 has said 
on his way up to the election as well as since he's been elected. We don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but real quick, Q Boogie, <laughs> any thoughts on, I mean, we laughed about it. You know, we didn't listen too much because we're in here kind of doing some production meeting stuff real quick, but you heard enough of it. Anything in there that makes you just want to roll your eyes? You got any comments on anything you Everything. Heard? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every I can, everything. I can dig it, Mister Thirty Three Seventy Five. You got anything, man? Can you imagine the signs outside the White House and people trying to impeach him <laughs> the day after? <laughs> like he would probably be gone. Right. But you know what's crazy about it? You got people who will honestly look you in the eye with a straight face and tell you that the treatment that Barack Obama got had nothing to do with his color That's and it's crazy. like right. you know it's like i mean okay whatever i mean I, again. I i i you know I, i'll say more about this later on in my rant but you know i i got a guy that i blog with a lot of times and i got to a point with him today i was like look man i know you get it because you're too smart not to get it mm -hmm. the way you talk and the things that you say i know you get it right but i think you get a kick out of acting like you don't get it mm -hmm. and so i'm done with this mm -hmm. I, i'm just i'm just not going to engage anymore unless we're going to have a productive conversation where we're engaging with each other and conceding you know because that's what a compromise discussion is supposed to be about right. if you're no longer interested in doing that then I'm no longer interested in engaging with you because it's a waste of my time and I'm not one to get frustrated with social media con conversations I'm just if I feel myself about to go there then I just stop right, right. you know what I'm saying like I, I have conversations and I enjoy it mm -hmm. I enjoy the, the exchange because it fuels me up to be able to come in here and do ain't no half step on Marcus Yale yeah, Mondays at seven. Mm -hmm. But when it gets to the point where I'm getting frustrated, eh, I'm done. <laughs> ain't no half step on Marcus J live from Dan Legacy and the radio. Now, I did want to talk in this segment, Q Boogie and Mister Thirty Three Seventy. I feel like this is a rap group actually. <laughs> 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 I feel like it, it's like the Fugees or something. <laughs> <laughs> Two dudes and a lady. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, cute boogie, Mr. Thirty Three Seventy Five. I mean, it was L boogie. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know, Mr. Th that's Mr. Thirty Three Seventy. That's a real hip hop name. Yeah, yeah it is. you know what yeah. I mean. You know, Marcus yeah, J is corny as hell. <laughs> you know, Marcus J is corny for a hip hop name. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I got real. Yeah, you names, got but I told you they'll grow on you. Because <laughs> he looked at me like I was crazy when I first told him that. Yeah, and it was a minute too because at when you first told me, I didn't know what it stood for. Now I know what it stands for. It makes total right. sense. Mm -hmm. Like the same with Mr. LP, yeah. Stephen Sykes, Legacy and a Radio alumni. You know, when he told me what LP stood for, I was like, oh, I get it. For a long time, he was like, Mr. LP. Yeah. What the hell is that? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you know, but now that I know, I get it. So, you know, anyway, ain't no how to step with Mark J. Live from the Dan Legacy and at Radio 8. Zero four four zero two two eight nine three. That is the number to dial if you want to rock with us. We will roll with you. Now, we've been teasing for the last few days, Q, about how we were going to talk about uh, what would they say, what would they do. And shout out to my mom. My mom's listening, y'all. So, hey, mom. Uh, so that so that <laughs> means we have to, you know, we have to be nice. And whatnot, but we also have to <laughs> not half step. <laughs> so Bob, don't be mad if I say a bad word here or there. But, um, but anyway, we talked about what would they do or what would they say, mm -hmm. Q Boogie, when you and I were doing our initial production meeting a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. And Mr. 3375 jump in. And that they could be anybody, composite. Mm -hmm. It could be my mom. Right. It could be your mom's. Right. It could be Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King, Megha Evers, hmm. Nelson Mandela, hmm. you know, Betty Shabazz. You know, I'm naming these prominent names, but I'm mostly speaking of baby boomers and the traditional uh, generation, I think is what they call folks born before 1945. I think right. that's called the traditional. The, the greatest generation. The greatest generation yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So I'm talking about the older folks. Gotcha. What would they say? And so I had written down a few things that I want to have a little bit of discussion on, and I want to run through them. A couple of them are going to uh, go together. Okay. So the first thing that I want to ask about is Barack Obama. Yeah. What would they say mm -hmm. about Barack Obama? So, Q Boogie, I want you to go first. Barack Obama is the 44th president of the United States. He celebrated his 56th birthday a few days ago, mm -hmm. 1961. That makes him a baby boomer. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we're talking about people like Malcolm X and Megar Evers and Muhammad Ali and, and some of the uh, greatest generation folks, mm -hmm. 
he would have been a kid to them. Mm-hmm. While they were doing what they were doing, he right. was either a little boy or not even born yet. Yeah. So he ascended to the presidency during the lifetime of Muhammad Ali, of all of those folks that we're referring to. He's the one that lived long enough to actually see it. Right. But let's talk about it. What would they say about them? About him, I should say. All right. So this right here is my own comment, but, you know, he's 56 year old. He's still fine. But <laughs> <sighs> 56 and fine. I mean, he's still, I mean, Mr. Shoot. 3375. I mean, you know, that's going to be us, though, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I mean, Michelle fine too. Shoot. I'm 43 and so, get caught. Like, I'm, 40, <laughs> I'm 43 and get caught. Like, so. how you just yeah. how, how you doing? How you just walk up and piss everybody off? So, I'm like, <laughs> you can't you can't take away you know this man in a tan suit. So, I think from the me being the only millennial in the room, I think what the greater the greatest generation and the baby boomers would. But my first thought would be that they would th- most likely think that they would never have thought they would see the day um, because of all the turmoil that was going on during that time frame. That was something they would probably be like, either they wouldn't want to see it because the, the scary thought would be something would happen to him and we would have to have another MLK, another um, Malcolm X, an- another martyr. And I think the shocking thing of that would be that, and then also, what is he gonna do for us while he's in there? I have so many people that, while he was still in office and then right as he was leaving, question what is it that he did for us? And I always hate to hear that and to read that because he did so much existing and surviving that office in and of itself but then you had my brother's keeper and what michelle was doing with eating healthy and because they weren't solely black programs does that mean that he did not do anything for us and even though my brother's keeper is a black program and he made the white house black as hell and i would hope that those generations would look at that as a greater Look at it as a greater whole and not solely the sum of its parts and not relegate him to the one half of who he is because his father was Kenyan. Right. And, but I think majority of that would be we are both shocked and amazed that he survived. Uh, our sister Didi is uh, is still listening, and Didi was a part of the conversation that I was having earlier. So she's familiar with what I spoke of when I said a few minutes ago that I'm just not going to engage anymore. So she's saying he was frustrating me today. So <laughs> I just want to get her comment in because she she knows who I'm talking about, and he's a good guy, he's a smart guy. Uh, so in spite of some of the things he says, he he can be mildly infuriating. Having said all of that. <laughs> Uh, Mr. 3375, jump in here. Shout out um, to Didi, Michelle K. Uh, our brother Hakeem just checked in. Hey, Hakeem. And I think that's everybody. Oh, and our sister Katrina checked in earlier, Katrina. too. All right, so go I ahead. Mr. I don't 30 think 30. I'm surprised that he made it. I mean, everybody was like, they're going to assassinate him. They're going to assassinate him. It was, they put too much stuff in place for that not to happen. And he didn't do enough for us for that to happen. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. he was the president of the United States, so he couldn't just be like, okay, I'm He's just going to cater for the black people. Right. He did stuff around stuff, but it helped a lot yeah. of black people yeah. in the long run. Right. But he did it like on a on a professional level <laughs> that people couldn't understand if he wasn't black. Right. You know, going through <laughs> what we're going through. Right. You know what I'm saying? You understand the So that means... And what you're saying, like he empowered a lot of black people. I seen a picture the other day where he had um, Obama's cabinet and then had Trump's cabinet. Trump's cabinet, all white. Mm-hmm. Barack's Hispanic, mm-hmm. black, just different minorities. Just women. It, just right, like, women. It yeah. was just. Yeah, because they had women. Yeah. Women? Yeah. Wow. Women. Right. We had women. Isn't that crazy? And black people? And black right. people. 
Women and black people smart? Mm-hmm. Mexicans. They right. had Mexicans. That's right. Crazy. Man, get out of here. It's you crazy. know, you're tripping. And I think if if the, satire if, people, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, for the folks that didn't pick up. Oh, uh, excuse <laughs> <Right>. me. <laughs> no, no, calm down. Right. And I think if those folks was alive, they'll be proud of the achievement that we are in. Far as yes, we have a black president. Yes, we've come so far. Right. But. They would have still been like, wow, this is what y'all going to do once we get in there. Right. You know, and c- can you imagine, like, Tupac, how outspoken he, he is? Mm-hmm. He would have took that and ran with it. Oh, yeah. He would have took it and ran with it. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, so he... he I, I, Brock Cloud would have told Pac, you can't come to the White House, bro. No, nah, bro. Jay, Jay is cool. You Jay can't come around right here no more, though. Come, you know, you know, I, I, I agree with a lot of what you guys said, you know, and I'll... I'll I'll, I'll take it a step further. You know, when Martin Luther King said, and I'm gonna play this clip before the end of the show, you know, I, I went to the top of the mountain, I looked over and I seen the promised land. Yeah. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. Right. I think these were the kinds of things that he was thinking of. Mm-hmm. Right. But Martin Luther King was so ahead of his time that it was more to him than just having a black president. Right. Like I think he saw a world where we actually didn't have to explain to white folk that shit's different right mm-hmm. for us right. yeah you know what i mean like we ain't got to explain to you that while i understand while i understand you because mm-hmm. you're white and you're the default yeah. in this country yeah right. the default like we all on computers right mm-hmm. and when you mix up your computer and do all of the cool stuff you like to do the computer yeah. but there's still a default mm-hmm. so if you want to go back to the way the computer was when it came out the box you press a button that's yeah. what white folk are in this country right. mm-hmm. they get in their feelings when they hear us speak this way it's kind of a them problem because we have to deal with a lot of y'all shit right. right but the reality is when you look at the way america is made up we have to almost kind of conform to what y'all do or what y'all say and how the world is set up and it's frustrating especially when it's not like you were punk and accepted it you accepted it because you need to live right but when the folks that you rock with and you see and you deal with every single day give you this whole thing about well if he would have just you know, listen to the police officer or if y'all wasn't just killing each other. Right. And these are, these are the excuses that you get for certain things. You know, I think somebody like Martin Luther King wouldn't have had no use for that kind of rhetoric. Yeah. Right. No use for it. And I know Malcolm X wouldn't have had no use for it. And I know Muhammad Ali would have had no use for it. And I obviously know that Tupac would have had no use for it. Now, Bob Marley, he would have been completely different. Bob was on some other shit. <laughs> right. He was on a whole nother level when, when it came to that. But... You know, it, it, it's, it's just very frustrating sometimes when, when you look at how the world is mm-hmm. and you get so-called liberal white folk that want to throw Martin Luther King in your face. Mm-hmm. Like, do y'all know this dude? Yeah. Like, do y'all know this dude? Like, do you really know this dude? Y'all because know I y'all think, took him away from us, right? Well, I, I think, <laughs> now here's the thing. Now, here, 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 now here's, mic drop, <laughs> here's a potential mic drop moment, right? Okay. But people, white people, white people in particular, I think they glorify Martin Luther King and they minimize Malcolm X. Oh, yeah. Here's what I mean. They look at the whole I have a dream and viewing people by the character and not the color of the skin. And you get liberal white folks to be like, you should be more like him. He would be rolling over because I had one say that to me a couple <laughs> right. days ago. Great. Right. You know Grief. what I mean? You know. He would be rolling over his grave. When you listen to the things that Martin Luther King was saying towards the second part of his uh, uh, existence in civil rights, right. yeah. Martin Luther King was tired of white folks' shit. Yeah. Right. He, he was. Whereas Malcolm X started off tired of white folks' shit, but when he went to Mecca, he saw that all white folks ain't bad. Yeah. Right. And it's true. All white folks ain't bad, but when we're looking at what would they do or what would they say, right. I think that they... If they both were alive in 1970, one was killed in 68, one was killed in 65. But if they were alive in 1970, I guarantee you, not that I think, but I know, I guarantee you they would have been working together Mm -hmm. and they would have been in line with each other because they were moving towards each other at the times of their deaths. Yeah, they were. Uh, Didi says, I think there would have been mixed feelings, wonderful astonishment, but also some detractors that felt 
as the first black president, he should also be making all efforts to press our agenda forward. I agree with you, Didi, and I'm glad you said that because it brought me to a point where sometimes you lose your train of thought, you get on the soapbox and you forget what you was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got on the soapbox and I forgot what I was going to say. But the piece that I was going to say is other communities came to 44 with an agenda. I do not know that black people specifically went to Barack Obama with an agenda saying, these are our issues, this is what we want. You can watch the news, Barack Obama, and see what's going on. You saw Trayvon, oh, Trayvon, I've had a son, he looked like Trayvon. Like, we, mm -hmm. we, we know that you're paying attention. Mm -hmm. But gay and lesbians and transgenders came to you and said, we want to be treated fairly, this is our platform, you need to do something about it. So guess what, he did, they went to him. Mm -hmm. Did we do that, black folk? I don't know that we did. Now, I also have issue with folks who say things like, man, he ain't never did nothing for no black people, man. Right. Barack Obama, why are you over rocking with him? He ain't did nothing for black. Right. You sound like a moron when you yeah. talk that way. Right. You really do because that tells me that you don't pay attention. You're not listening. You're not listening. You don't pay attention because he's not going to put his fist up like, like Carlos and them did mm -hmm. in, in, in the Olympics right. in the yeah. 60s. Right. He can't do that. Right. Nobody would expect him to do that. But when you look at health care, if you look at you know, Lily Ledbetter, if you look at, mm -hmm. you know, the, the grants that for the HBCUs yep. and things of that sort, yeah. if you look at the fact that, you know, he did those things, this is what he's done for black people. Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I'm saying? So this is how I look at that. Ain't no half step with Marks J, live from the Dan Legacy Internet Radio. What would they say, y'all, about Donald Trump? the four, 45th president of the United ain't States. Change. Now, I, 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 want, <laughs> I want to keep it respectful, I, you know, because one thing that is easy to do is to throw stones, take shots at him. Mm -hmm. I want to keep it to the things that he's done and not our personal feelings about him. Right. You know what I mean? Because that's something that I take very seriously because it's very difficult for me as a journalist, as a pundit, as a talk show host, or as any of those things that I like to call myself that nobody else would call me, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for me to have credibility when I have these conversations mm -hmm. about how y'all shitting on Barack Obama, but now you ain't saying nothing about Donald Trump. It's hard right. for me to, to, to talk to these people when I'm calling him an idiot and a jerk and I'm right. saying nasty things about Donald Trump. I would prefer to keep it to the things he's done as opposed to my personal feelings. So for the purposes of this discussion, I want you guys to do that as well. So we're gonna keep with what would they do, what would they say, Donald Trump. What's that, what's that dude? George somebody. He was in the 60s, 60s or 70s, it was George something. George, what did George do? He was in politics. Oh, that narrows it down. <laughs> I was hope like not George like Bush or nothing like that. George, but it was was it Jefferson? No. Oh. So <laughs> he was a, he was a white politician. He was a white Southern politician. And you sound like you might be speaking of the Southern strategy. Possibly, but I can't think of his well, George. Tell something. me what this George fella did. Uh, he was. And mom, if you're listening, if you're still there. Who's she talking about? George, yeah, George like, somebody George from the 60s something. and the 70s. And, um, Help us out. I know you're still listening. He was basically trying to push that Southern Jim Crow um, agenda. And he made it. He he tried twice to get into the White House. Oh, it might Dude. sound. Uh, no, uh, no. George Wallace. George Wallace. Thank you, Dee Dee. He, he, he was. Yeah, he, he was. He was the he was the uh, sheriff. Down in Alabama, George Wallace. I would think they would think he is a dumber version of George Wallace. Because every time I think of, especially when he was first campaigning, all I kept seeing is this is George Wallace. And not even, this is a very uneducated George Wallace. Like even George Wallace knew what he was talking about with the Southern strategy and everything that he had going on and the agenda that he was trying to push. This dude knows literally nothing and I feel as if our ancestors would see that and go, oh, my gosh. It's, it, we can't even say it's, well, it is a worse version of him because George Wallace in and of himself was a terrible person until he right. got older in age and realized what he had done. And then he was like, oh, well, I'm sorry, black people. I think and you might, you see, you're mixing people up. Which was, no, I'm not. <laughs> you are because it sounds like you, at first you were talking about Lee Atwater. Then it sounds like no. you were talking about George Wallace. Now it sounds like when you talk about the switch, it sounds like you might be talking about Strom Thurmond. No. 
Because George Wallace did a switch too. I don't well, know that George, George Wallace did a switch. Because I remember, I was, me being a nerd. Because Lee Atwater was the one that did the Southern strategy where he talked about, well, you can't call them the N words no more. <laughs> so he's the one who was teaching, you know, the old Dixiecrats who right. became yeah. the Republicans how to dog whistle. That was Lee Atwater. And they got him on tape saying that stuff. Right. George Wallace was the one who had the dogs and the water hoses and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And Strom, Strom Thurmond was with them. But Strom Thurmond also switched his party later in life. So that's why I said it sounded like you might be mixing some folks. I don't know because he, let me see. Because he. Strom Thurmond was like a, a, a uncle or a cousin of somebody to Al Sharpton. Oh, oh <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's like a descendant. His family owned Al Sharpton's people, yeah. You can't. You really can't write this stuff. Damn it! You, you, you right. really can't. Because he, Didi, I'm not sure if he was a sheriff or. Go- I know he was a sheriff. I'm not sure if he made it to governor, uh, Didi. But if you could look that up for me, uh, since you already, you know, you already being our uh, uh, our person who's looking up stuff, <laughs> 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 you know, and we know how Didi rocks with us here yeah. uh, in studio from time I'm to time. It up so too. look that up for us to see if he was a governor, Mister Thirty Three Seventy Five. Wow. Uh, while Q Boogie is, is looking that up and Didi is assisting her, Hakeem is saying what up to us in the crew. Uh, what do you say about what our ancestors would say about Donald Trump? I think a lot of them probably would look at it as I look at it. Like you have a man that really don't know what he's doing. Yeah. And he's just pretty much just <laughs> going with the flow, doing with doing whatever, you know, and and you know, he's already drunk with power. Yeah. So he's he has that mind frame, and he's in a position now where he really don't know the position, but he's in a position now. To, where when people say America is bully, he's gonna put that to a to a test. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no when he th- when he shot that missile or bomb over there. The without, mother of all bombs. Right. Without talking to Congress, if yeah. Barack would have had done that. It would have been all chaos yeah. going on. You know what I'm saying? One thing I try to avoid doing, and it's hard, yeah. is saying, but if Barack would have, because one of the things that he always does mm. is he always likes to invoke Barack Obama right. when he does things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's so whack to me yeah. that he does that. It's like, you the president now. And Why I can't remember, uh, first of all, Didi is saying that he was the governor of governor Alabama. Governor Alabama twice. twice. Two times. Yeah. Right. Okay. Two times. Thank you, Didi. Appreciate you. Um, I, I always think it's kind of whack to me, yeah. Mr. 3375, and I know you agree with me yeah. when he does that. It's like, I can't remember, and I've been old enough to vote since I voted for Bill Clinton in 1992, mm-hmm. and I've been conscious of voting basically since the Ronald Reagan era when I was right. a little young man. My, my mother and my father were, you know, always watching the news and things of that sort. So I always paid attention, right? you know, and I had an opinion about Ronald Reagan because like most young people, I followed what their opinions was. Mm-hmm. By the time the first George Bush was elected in 1988, I actually gave, I, I actually cared right. by then. So I've paid attention. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I just don't know that presidents shit on their pre- predecessors the way right. he does. No. He does. That's just so whack to right. me. That, that's just because he don't know the type of position he's in. Yeah. It's like we talked about before like when he won it he was almost like he was shocked right well, he, yeah. he was yeah. shocked melania was shocked she was like dang i almost got that you know his, yeah his mama was an illegal and his yeah. wife is an illegal yeah and yeah he's just chilling and it's the messed up part about it is i think it ultimately comes down to because he hated barack so much is he always wants to keep him in the forefront so people will always have something to compare yeah to. right and so it's like well you already hate him just like i hate him he did this so you must hate him for this too and it's like yeah. but you're not coming with anything practical you're not coming with anything that makes sense you're just undoing things because you don't like him now yeah. i won't play devil's advocate because there's about 33 percent of the country that actually rock with him which is yeah. the lowest yeah. approval rating in the history of <laughs> approval ratings <laughs> Between 33 and 36, depending on which poll you look at. Yeah, I was about to ask, so it went down even more? It did. It, it did. It did. Because he sucks. But he, entirely. I shouldn't have said that. But no, he does. You're true. right. But, I, I, well, I said I'm not going to take a shot, so I'm not going to take a shot. His performance, <laughs> his performance sucks. Um, but having said that, you know, 
there are people who really, really, really rock with this dude, mm-hmm. and they will argue and say, now, we're in the South. We're in Virginia, and so it's more of them here yeah. than right. anywhere else, and the kind of job that I work, I'm in places where I, you know, I seen a George Wallace for president, you know, f- flyer in one of the places I was in Hopewell, Virginia, you know what I mean? Right. For like 1964. No, it wasn't George Wallace. What's the other dude that Hillary Clinton used to work for before she switched to the, the uh, what's the dude from Arizona? Oh, oh. Uh, Barry Goldwater. Yeah. I oh. saw a Barry oh, Goldwater. Yeah, I saw, wow. a, I saw a Goldwater for president. Sign. And he and was ahead of Nixon, right? Mm-hmm. Goldwater was 64. Okay. He ran in 64, mm-hmm. and he lost to LBJ. Okay. Uh, but anyway, I won't get too far, of course. Yeah. Uh, Didi says, uh, I'm absolutely certain that Malcolm X wouldn't have anything positive to say I agree. about Donald I Trump. I agree with that. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I agree. But he would have been very, very tactful yeah. with the way he spoke. Right. Ain't no ask to have Marks J live from the Dan Legacy on that radio. Last piece that I want to get in. This is, this, now, this piece may elicit some groans. From the Facebook Live and the Legacy and Air Radio crew, 804-402-2893. I know you're listening, and I know that if you hear us, you might want to get in. So if you do, call us up. We'll put you right on. Uh, if you want to just listen and type to us, or if you want to just listen, whatever. This is an interactive show. We want to make sure that you feel a part of the discussion. So call us if you choose to, 804-402-2893. But here's the other piece that I want to get to. What would they say about black people? voting monolithically democratic basically for the last 50 years do you think they would have any issue with that do you guys have any issue with voting democrat monolithically as black people because see here's the last piece i'm gonna say as i set it up before you guys take the mic the mic everybody wants to put black people at the forefront of electing Barack Hussein Obama as the 44th president of the United States, which, yeah, black folks had a lot of pride around his election, and it was great, it was dope, and I was one of those people. I, I softened over the years because I didn't agree with everything he did, but I still maintain a level of pride because the reality is nasty white folk feel like if you got a drop of black blood, you black. Mm-hmm. And liberal white folks as well he's half white you know what i mean like right. <laughs> like cut the bullshit right. he's a black dude <laughs> <laughs> you are what you look like when you get right. pulled over by the right. cops right okay right. let's let's be clear about that as charles drew who didn't get to go to a black hospital mm-hmm. get, didn't get to go to a white hospital ended up dying right. when he crashed his car in, in the Ford in the 50s in right. greensboro north carolina on my birthday by the way don't ask me why i know these things but because it was things, i just kind of had a you know far as gum moment just now <laughs> just, yeah but anyway <laughs> the reality is he's a black dude he's a, he's, a, he's a black dude and it didn't matter that he's a black dude right. because black people vote democratic right. in overwhelmingly strong numbers right from I, bill clinton to barack obama to hillary clinton i think people vote in tax brackets Who's going to help them out in the long run? That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're Republican, if you not not Republican, but if you're a billion, millionaire, Republicans are going to benefit you. If you're a Democrat and you're in the, you know, in, the, in my <laughs> bracket range, mm-hmm. Democrats is going to benefit you. Now, everybody. Now, everybody was hooping and hollering when George Bush threw them that, that extra money out that year. <laughs> you know that like, was my first you know, time ever, like, oh, ever George, um, oh, doing George Bush, my boy. George Yo, Bush, my gave boy. gave me a stimulus package. Gave me a stimulus package. You know what I'm saying? Like, George Bush was your boy then. Until that was my he, first time ever doing taxes. You know, until he started, you know, September 11 and all that war stuff mm-hmm. started going on. But I do think people vote in tax brackets. Like, this is the person that's going to help me not pay as much taxes as I'm paying right now. Right. And I think they probably would have been okay with it. All right. This might be a long walk, but being, again, the only millennial in here, I my first time being able to vote presidentially because I had just aged into that space was for Obama. I was 21. 18, you know, I still hadn't figured out those things. Because unfortunately, when you're around those ages, they don't talk to you about those things. So there was no, you know, find out who's running for gubernatorial, find out who's running for your local anything. It's like, no, you need to worry about the presidency. This is all you need to matter. This is all that matters. So growing up in a household that was 
I'm a vote for the black person of anything. It could be Family Feud, and we voting for the black family, even though they got three points. Yep. <laughs> I thought I was the only one that did no, that. No, no. I, I think did we all, time. all did that. But you know what's crazy? <laughs> you know what's crazy, though? The mm-hmm. world that we live in forces us to do that. Right. Yeah. Yep. I, I want to steal your thunder. You, you, you continue, but like when you said that, I'm like, damn, I do that. No, I, do. I think, I think it, it comes as a un... Um, unintentional thing because you're like you know we don't get to do a whole bunch of other stuff let me vote for this dude let me root for this dude on wheel of fortune to get this car like that's what we look at so growing up with that not saying that that's a solely a millennial thing but majority of us millennials were old enough to vote for barack and we didn't really get into voting i remember when diddy first did vote or die i was in 11th grade so I'm sitting there like, all right, these things are making sense, but I'm like, I just really don't understand it. Right. And because you were seven, 16, 17. Exactly. So a few years later, when I'm able to vote for Barack, my very first time, I was, I was, and I was pregnant. So I was walking into the voting booth as a pregnant black woman, like automatically, Barack got my vote. Right. Ain't no no policy. Didn't know, and I was not nearly as woke. Now, did you quote. did you vote for him because he was black? Mm-hmm. Because we weren't, at the time, nothing else was being pushed, right. especially to my generation. It right. was, a lot of you are just voting for the first time. Y'all should do this because it's such a historic thing, but not because this is what is a, a part but of what you But you got believe. instincts, and you're a smart woman, and right. you would have known not to vote for Herman Cain, and you would have known not to vote for Al Sharpton, right. Right. and you would have known... Not to vote for Ben Carson, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you're a right. smart, you're a smart woman. Yeah. Even even as a young woman, you were a smart woman, and mm-hmm. you knew that there was something different about Barack Obama. Yeah. Right. That led you towards that path. Yeah. Right. Of voting for him, Mr. Thirty Three Seventy Five. Black people vote overwhelmingly Democratic. Now, my opinion is that the Republican p- platform is not necessarily a platform that we can't potentially get behind. It's the people in the party, for the most part, that we see mm-hmm. a bunch of freaking crazy people, right. and we ain't trying to have them leading us. Right. Having said that, what's your thoughts on us, black folks, voting monolithically over 90% in most of the last 40 to 50 years for the Democratic Party in national elections? I mean, it's suspected. Like I said, like she was saying, I, I got into an argument, a debate a couple of years ago, and I was like, Obama won his first term because black people went out there and said, I'm going to vote for this black man. I believe. But you do realize that the numbers does not support that theory, though. Right. Yeah. Because if those numbers supported that theory, then Hillary Clinton would be the president right now. Right. right. But she's not black. It doesn't matter because this is, this is how I set it up. Mm-hmm. Black people mm-hmm. vote the same way every election. The difference might be you might get more black people to vote, right. mm-hmm. but the percentage right. the, of black people who actually do vote is around about the same right. Democrat versus Republican I every election. This election, I just think people just didn't know who to vote for. I, well, I, think, I mean, you know, it's just well, like, I, I think that us as black people for the most part, the devil, basically. <laughs> I think that I us couldn't a, vote for either of them. My, <laughs> conscience, my, my conscience wouldn't allow me to do it. And you know, mom, I know that your Hillary is your girl, but the reality is she yeah. won Virginia, so my conscience is clear. <laughs> 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 my conscience is clear. Q buggy. Now I think that because we are taught that us as black people come from a democratic space. Yeah. We anyone that is Outside of that is othered, even though MLK was a Republican. Well, it's like his daddy was. His daddy right. was. He wasn't. But he wasn't. He was an independent. He oh. never ever declared. I and researched that's a mis- that it was a Republican. And he, okay. His daddy was. Okay. Right. I, the thing with that was he understood that a person in his position mm-hmm. taking on a political a political party minimizes his power. Mm-hmm. 
because like it's almost like when you hear Michael Jordan say things like, "Well, you know, Republicans buy sneakers too." Yeah, right. it, it comes from a different place, but it's a similar mentality. Yeah. Well, Martin Luther King never declared. I never knew that. He, he never declared a political were, party. His father was a Republican. Okay, right. you were researching and see it all the time, like. He was a Republican. His, fa- his father was Republican. Now, see, you got to also remember the history of why black people voted Republican. Yeah. Right? Because the Democrats were the assholes yeah. 200 years ago. Yeah. yeah. They were the Dixiecrats. Yeah. They were the ones who were the KKK and mm-hmm. all of that kind of stuff. Right. And Nick's, uh, what you call it, Lincoln freed the slaves and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. So, of course, black people, when they could vote, right. voted, voted for him. For, yeah. But it started to shift mm-hmm. with FDR because FDR was the one who had a lot of. I don't know if this is the right word, but a lot of socialist uh, policies right. that were that were helpful towards poor people, yeah. and right. a lot of the poor people in the country were people of color, right. Right. i.e., us. Yeah, and so that began to shift from the 30s and the 40s up to the civil rights bill in the 60s and the voters' rights bill in the 60s when it was a lot. So basically, from the 40s to the 1965, eh. Mm-hmm. A little bit of both. Mm-hmm. By the time they signed that voter rights bill in the 60s. Mm-hmm. It was 64? It was 64? Yeah. Wait, wait, Fannie? Fannie Lou Hamer? I think it was, I think it was the voter rights bill of 1964. Because okay. right. I'm pretty sure King saw it before he died. So did Malcolm. Right. Okay. E- e- either way, Lyndon B. Johnson was the yeah. one who signed it. And we've pretty much been voting Democratic exclusively. Right. right. Till then, and I, I have been a strong proponent of black people registering as independent. Mm-hmm. And if there is a non asshole Republican that you can get behind, then you can vote for him right. or her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you should you should register as an independent because the reality is neither side is ro- is working for us. Yeah, Democrats feel like they already got you. And the Republicans feel like they, they ain't going to get you. What right. do you have to lose? So neither one, yeah, exactly. So neither <laughs> one is going to work for you. Right. And every once in a while, they'll throw a black face in your face, mm-hmm. a black face in your face to make you feel like, see, we rock with you. And that black face will be somebody like Herman Cain or Ben Carson. Yep. And you're like, uh, nah. no. No, nah, I'm good. Nah. But I think, I think what, really, what it really boils down to is groupthink. And we feel that, well, because my grandmother voted Democrat, my mother voted Democrat, I must have to vote Democrat. And if you think, I I think that's because we had so many, it was so contentious this last election season. So many people had to return home. Families were literally broken because somebody voted outside of what they thought they should vote. And even greater, you know, less, well, yeah, lesser than, I didn't like the fact that you voted for so-and-so because of what they stand for. But I don't like the fact that you voted for this person because this family is Republican and you voted Democrat. Like, it's gotten even into those spaces. I think we just do groupthink in a lot of ways. We do, us as black folk did groupthink because the person we were voting for was black. We thought we would never see the day. Chris Rock told us that we would never see the day. So we was like, Tupac Tupac said we ain't ready to have a black president. Remember that line? Exactly. From Changes. Exactly. So us... Seeing that was like, I'm being part of history. Yeah. We didn't even think about it. Yeah. But I think it really comes down to group thing. Ain't no half stab on Marcus J. Live from the Dan Legacy and that radio. Didi says she can't lie. She has voted solely Democratic in presidential elections, but local elections, she'll vote for the person whose platform she agree with. Locally, she's been voting independent. And I totally agree because that's essentially what I've done. Uh, I've yet to find a national Republican that I can agree with. Uh, but locally, you know, it's it's a little bit different for me. I personally wish to be an independent, which is what I am inside my mind. Virginia is not a state that allows you to do that. You have to declare mm-hmm. blood or cuz, red or blue. Uh, mm-hmm. So you, you have no choice. Uh, but, you know, it kind of is what it is. Ain't no half step with Marks J. Live from the Den, Legacy Internet Radio. We're going to take our first break of the night. We come back. Q Boogie is taking over the con, as they say on Star Trek. Be better, beloved Marcus J. <laughs> Q Boogie, Mr. 3375, with his triumphant return. <laughs> Facebook Live, we're going to shut you down for a minute. We're going to bring you back up on the other side. You're listening to the flagship show, Legacy Internet Radio. It's called Ain't No Half Step on Marcus J. I'm Marcus J. You are you. We are the crew. When we coming back, Q Boogie? Oh, my gosh. <laughs>
<laughs> in a few. Oh man. no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. She don't like when I rhyme, but yeah, it's really good. be back in a few, y'all. Stay with us.